Hello everyone, Richard here. Today I want to talk to you about Project Snowflake. This all started at Christmas time when myself and my two daughters were searching around for interesting models to print over Christmas. We normally choose things like snowflakes, stars, that sort of thing. So we stumbled across an interesting project on Thingiverse by Aunt Daisy uh, called Electra. And this was a modular origami setup. So it used small modular 3D printed parts joined together in a little bit like origami and it actually has got some links back to origami there's a great blog post on how this all came about and how Aunt Daisy uh, produced these models so Aunt Daisy as well also produced one of my most favorite models of all time which is the articulated trailer bike which is absolutely beautiful model to print so I can recommend that one as well so Electra which is the modular origami system we printed it off and it was very good we used it for Christmas so here it is this is the finished modular origami Electra and it all starts with these little single segments you print out around 30 of 30 of these and click them all together so we produced this and it was very very interesting the light colored ones are actually glow in the dark and my daughters really like that at night time it glows up but my eldest daughter, who's 10 and has been getting really interested into Arduino, 3D printing. I got her a small 3D printer, Rep Rap Fisher, last summer. She built it up and she's been using that to print off all sorts of different things. So we started talking about how we could possibly turn this into an interesting project that we could do over Christmas and in the new year. Um, and that's how Project Snowflake started. So what we had to do was think about this modular origami and we use this as a starting point because it's got some critical angles that you need to uh, follow and different shapes on the, the individual origami sections. So we use pretty much the same principle that um, Aunt Daisy used to design this one but it was a great learning experience because I could show my daughter in FreeCAD how to model these parts and what we ended up doing was changing from the standard sized modular origami and then there was this one which we put a LED hole in the center of and I wasn't quite too happy with that so we ended up changing it quite completely to this design which has got more of a middle section where the LED can be mounted to glow the individual segments and also a little bit more of a sloped section that can light up nicely with the LED. So we designed this and assembled it all together in the CAD just to make sure that all the angles were correct. And at the same time, I'm sort of very familiar with the NeoPixels from Adafruit. They're quite nice and easy to drive. You can get them in different configurations. You can get them in rings, strips. And also from China, you can pick up these little things, which are strips of NeoPixel style LEDs. And all these LEDs are, they have an individual LED and they have a little driver chip for the LED as well as a shift register. So you send data through in serial form, you clock it through and you can actually control the color, RGB levels and the brightness level by PWMing effectively over and over again the data coming out. So there's some really nice Adafruit libraries to do this on Arduino. So we ordered some of these, a long strip of these which was about I think less than $20 for 50 of these in a string and these are quite nice because they're chunky they're completely watertight so you can put them outside um, and fit them into things so these are great what we also did was looked at different Arduino boards that we could use so we thought about using the Uno which is a sort of a standard little Arduino board then we looked at the Lilypad which is quite an old one but quite a nice little board and some of the Adafruit ones, which is the Flora, which is a nice little board, and I think the Gemma as well, which is an absolutely tiny little board. The Flora is really nice, and we ordered some of these because they're great for my daughter to play with, because they've actually got a NeoPixel built onto them, right onto the board. So you can plug this in, you can start developing some code and writing some test examples, and just get that going in whatever colour you want. So we ended up actually using a little, uh, little Arduino... Um, micro or nano, I think I actually used na a nano one in the end. We we're going to use the micro, but uh, the nano is a little bit easier to use because it's got the USB port on. So, all you need to actually do 
with setting this up is have a small Arduino board and a resistor that you have to put on the very first pixel of the of the NeoPixel strips and that resistor is around 500 ohms that just protects against any transients going into the data line so that's the data pin you connect up the NeoPixels positive voltage which is usually 5 volts or 12 volts depending on the type of pixels that you buy and the LEDs that you buy and then you ground it so that's pretty much straightforward this the schematic of that is so simple um, you'll be able to see from the photographs that I put up then what you need to do is mount all of the NeoPixels into the individual segments that we printed out and this took quite some time to print out as well as mounting so each one of these had to be printed out we printed two at a time um, the smaller ones originally we did on my daughter's uh, RepRap Fisher printer but we had to use a bit of a bigger printer these are completely hollow so they're a single wall but they have actually got a special section in the base of a diffuser so this is a 12 millimeter hole that you can clip in these little pixels into push them in and they lock in place and they're completely watertight so all of these modular sections don't have any any way of getting water inside and the pixels themselves when they're pushed in are completely watertight too so we ended up doing that and this is how it finished up and this is project snowflake it's quite a monster and it's a few people have said well you can see all the wires and you can see all the all the electronics and things inside but yeah it is a learning project so the idea with this was to make it watertight so we'd actually go outside and my daughter's had this in a bedroom developing various routines for the flashing sequences the ultimate goal is to hang this up outside the little bit of electronics I've got at the top here just need to go into a smaller uh, case that's probably just going to fit inside one of these triangles with a bolt section at the top maybe a ring 3d printed again so I can actually hang this up and if we can hang this up in like a tree or off the garage or something like that and actually run it at night you'll we'll be able to see this lighting up from quite a way away so that's the idea is to try and make a sculptural modular origami 3d printed light sculpture really um, and it's been a lot of fun so I'm going to put all the files up on Imagine for the model and as much as I can photographs for the schematics how to wire it up and all of the code which is really just examples from Adafruit uh, NeoPixel library but my daughter is obviously working on making those a lot better now so if we have updates to make this flashing sequence really cool I'll let you know so I hope that was useful and a little fun project you can either do with, especially with kids it's really good fun but also just have a play around with 3d printing diffusing of light and this 3d printing material is, is PLA but it's actually a translucent PLA it's not completely clear and it's not uh, the normal transparent natural PLA it's actually a translucent PLA so it works really particularly well for this type of application okay I'll see you all again next time thanks ever so much for watching mm -hmm.